those cities. They realize they're being elbowed out of the way in their own cities. They see the good guys, the cops, being vilified by the most evil administration that you could ever imagine. And the thugs are being invited into Yale University. Can you imagine that Yale University would invite street thugs to teach a course, an anti-police course? Here's a few other facts that are kind of rattling around in my thinking cap today. Remember the agitator Al Sharpton? Do you remember he was one of the principal architects of the riots? Going all the way back to New York's uh, Freddy's Fashion Mart, where he egged on a crowd to burn down a building, according to all estimates. Do you remember how he was vilified for the fake Tawana Brawley case? where he got a black lady to say she was raped and, and feces smeared on her by a detective, and it turned out to be a big lie by Al Sharpton. And do you remember what happened to him as a result of that? He was hired by uh, NBC. He was invited into the White House over 100 times by this illegitimate administration. He selected our current Attorney General, Loretta Lynch, and he agitated so much so that Ferguson almost burned and Baltimore almost burned. Police have been shot in an epidemic across America because of Al Sharpton, in my estimation, Eric Holder, Barack Obama, and their anti-police rhetoric. It's been open season on the police, mainly white police by young black males. Ooh, I didn't sound like uh, the newspaper, did I? Where they say the assailant and they don't describe him. They say the victim, they don't describe her. Never. Nothing, no description. Be on the lookout for nobody. It's a male. What does he look like? We don't know. I just gave you some demographics. There's a war against white police being conducted by young black males that's been sparked by Al Sharpton, Barack Obama, Eric Holder, and others in the opinions of millions of people who still have brains. Now, there's more to the story here. After Al Sharpton was used successfully by this band of radical maniacs to do this, what happened recently? They took the street thug Al Sharpton off MSNBC. They canceled his regular show. And then what happened? Notice he's not seen or heard anymore. They dummied him up. Why have they shelved this, this radical, the street radical? Why have they taken him off the, the airwaves and why have they put the dummy away? Why have they put him back in the closet? I'll let you figure it out. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Through almost an hour of the show, I mean, Donald Trump will be on in the next hour, and then there's an hour after that to talk about things, including that. But I raised an issue here, survival of the fittest, and I talked about how the country is being destroyed from within. You think you know all of it, but you don't know all of it. You don't, you, only, you don't even know the half of it. And then I raised the controversial idea, which is that Obama has so gone off the reservation that the Democrat power structure that put him in power is so freaked out that they're warming up Biden in the bullpen, not for the 2016 run, because they know he would lose to a virtually any Republican. Biden is a non-entity, a nobody. They know that. He's not popular. No matter what machine they put behind him, he'd fall apart on the, on the campaign trail. They want to just put him in power in order to have him do what they want because Obama is no longer controllable. It's an idea. Makes for a fiction book, I suppose. And I don't know what parliamentary or executive uh, maneuvers they could use, legal maneuvers, that is, to remove him from office. I have no idea what the mechanics might be for that, if there are any. Whether they can declare he's insane and get three psychiatrists to declare he's a psychotic and they have to remove him, that's not going to happen. So how would they remove him legally? How could that even happen? I don't know. It would take a novelist, someone who wrote uh, Abuse of Power, A Time for War, and uh, Countdown to Mecca to figure that one out. But he's not writing anymore. No more fiction. So I don't know who to call. I'll call you, the listener of the show. Maybe you have an idea. Any ideas? Democratically how to remove a president who's gone rogue. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, 
Adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Breaking news for you on the Savage Nation just came out. It's on Fox News. How many years have I been telling you the United Nations is largely a slush fund for corrupt officials? How many years have I warned you it's nothing but a scam? Ex-UN General Assembly leader just arrested, accused of pocketing $500,000 in bribes. President of the United Nations General Assembly said, corruption has no place there. After prosecutors accused one of his predecessors of accepting more than a half a million dollars in bribes from Chinese businesses. Former UNGA president John Ash used some bribe money to fly his family to New Orleans, where the family stayed in an $850 a night hotel room, according to court documents filed in New York City today. Prosecutors said other money was used to lease a luxury car, pay the UN uh, leader's home mortgage, buy him Rolex watches and custom suits, and construct a $30,000 basketball court at his home in Dobbs Ferry, New York, where he was arrested Tuesday. The great UN official opened two bank accounts to receive the funds and then underreported his income by more than 1.2 mil, officials said. So the bottom line is, this guy, Ash, a former UN ambassador from Antigua and Barbuda, where's Barbuda? I know where Antigua is, I've never heard of Barbuda. I know the Barbados, I know Bermuda, maybe there's an island i never heard of Barbuda. Never, anyway, this corrupt goon comes from Antigua and Barbuda, and he served as the uh, head of the 193-nation assembly from September 2013 to September 2014. He now faces tax fraud charges in what authorities call a conspiracy with five others, including Francis Lorenzo, a deputy UN ambassador from the Dominican Republic who lives in the Bronx. Charges were brought by U.S. Attorney Preet Bahara. And as you well know, Preet Bahara takes no prisoners. Preet Bahara said today, I wouldn't be surprised if we see other people charged. Well, that's the story. The U.N. should be taken out of the United States of America. It's a slush fund, largely for corrupt officials. It's where the false science of global warming is being disseminated, largely by, again, corrupt officials who are trying to create that into a bigger slush fund, and on and on. Hour two of the Savage Nation. At the bottom of the hour, we have Donald Trump. We're going to talk about trade. Donald will talk about trade, the trade deal Obama is trying to scam us with, basically selling us down the river now to a Japan, Malaysia, Thailand, and other nations for reasons you can well understand. You talk about corruption in the General Assembly. How about corruption in the White House? How much more corrupt can it get than he does a deal that's good for them and bad for us? It's so bad for us that even the AFL-CIO agrees with my position. Even Bernie Sanders, the commie, agrees with my position. This is not free trade. Not at all. Talk about Putin, we'll talk about ISIS with Donald Trump. Again, I want to remind you to go to michaelsavage.com. I'm speaking like weird today. I am gumbling. I'm drumbling words together. My, my thoughts are coming so fast. It's a strange one. You know, it's coming so fast that it's hard for me to keep up with my own thoughts. I don't know why. I just, um, there's so much going on. It's just hard to deal with it lately. My ratings came out yesterday on streaming. I have the highest I've ever had, 26 share. Rush has a 14 share. That's a big deal. And it's a big deal for a number of reasons. Let's go to the callers. I raised the controversial question in the last hour. And the question was, could the Democrat Party itself remove Barack Obama because he has gone off the reservation, he's gone so far to the left that he threatens not only the nation, which they don't care about, but the chances for their own party? I mean, let me make it very clear. They could care less about the United States of America, all of them. It's a, a pack of anti-Americans from, from the top to the bottom. But they're worried about the next election, and they feel that Obama's leftward moves are so radical that Hillary's finished. And that virtually any Republican could beat her. And they're afraid that it'll keep lurching to the left even further. So I say, is it possible they could do to him, legislatively, what was done to Neville Chamberlain by his own Labor Party in England 
uh, when he had gone so far to the left in pacifism that the nation of England was was threatened uh, by his uh, by his political moves. What do you think? Could they do it? On what basis could they do it? WMAL, John, is there a mechanism by which Obama could be removed other than impeachment? Oh, yeah. It's called the 25th Amendment to the Constitution. Section 4, I think it is. When the uh, vice president and majority of the cabinet uh, determine that the president is unfit, they vote, transmit the uh, message to the uh, leaders of the two houses of Congress, and the president's out. All right, but how is a hand-picked cabinet, hand-picked by Obama, ever going to do that? The same way they do everything. Biden buys them off. He promises them more. And then, of course... Oh, in other words, so the corrupt cabinet officials, the functionaries, the apparatchiks of the Democrat Socialist Party, they just get bought off for a larger bribe. Yeah, they don't care about Obama. They don't care about America, that's for sure. They care about themselves. You know what's interesting? They just dumped the education secretary last week, Arnie Duncan. I wonder what that's about. You think he must have stood up to Obama about something? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. They, it, it, it is beyond Byzantine. It is, it is insane. But have you ever seen a country as corrupt as this one is right now? I mean, serious. I'm being absolutely dead on serious. I'm as serious as let us say smallpox, when I ask that question. Have you ever seen such generic... I'm talking about corruption that runs across every aspect of this government. Corruption and incompetence. And it's more evident now than ever, even to the average, let us say, low-thinking dolt. Here's Obama for a year, making believe he's been fighting ISIS. Oh, uh, Putin starts bombing them a week ago, and they're on the run. If that doesn't show us that even the military has been hamstrung by him, what needs to happen next, I don't know. Well... Uh, not time for talking about it on the radio, but uh, I used to work for the Department of Defense, uh, both in uniform and out. And uh, yeah, and I'm going to send you a free copy of a book called Government, <laughs> Government Zero. <laughs> oh, yes, indeedy. What a world we're living in. Tom on WJR, will the Dems ever consider removing a rogue president like this? Go ahead, please. Not a chance. We know that. I mean, the last thing they're going to want to do would be to take out that black president and take a chance of alienating themselves from all of their, their, their black sheeple or the minority sheeple. I'm going to be careful, not just black minorities. They're not, they would never do it. It would, they know if they could do anything, they would maybe try to make it so bad that the Republicans would do it and make them look like the bad guys, but they're never going to do that themselves. Not a chance. Are you sure? Are you sure that even you, you you sure that even within the Democrat Party there are insane individuals who see what he's doing? Well, I'll tell you why I even asked this question. I know it would have been ludicrous to ask it a week ago, but two things have happened in the last week that indicate that this could happen, that they could remove him. One is his apparent failure, his overt failure with uh in Syria has been so naked that even the average moron sees how impotent he is and what a liar he is. He has not been fighting ISIS and everyone sees that. That's number one. But more than that, something else happened. What else happened that has indicated Barack Obama has li literally come loose from the screws that keep him connected to the earth of reality? What else happened? Tell me something big happened other than that, the, the ISIS thing. Something else happened. He's trying to push a trade deal with the so-called trans-Pacific nations that even his base in the AFL-CIO oppose. Why would he do that? Why would he alienate all of these union workers and voters? Why? Who was he answering to? Who was pushing him on this? If his left-wing base is opposed to it, who was he answering to? It has to be foreign powers. It's like the corrupt UN official. Something doesn't add up. Somebody is pulling the strings of the rogue president, and it's not the far left. It's even more sinister than that. It goes beyond the far left. Uh, is that irrational or not? No, I think you're right on target. I, but I, so most people don't seem to realize how much bigger this is than just here in our own country. I mean, they're, they're All right, so let's go back to the story I just read, the breaking news. Corrupt U.N. chief takes a $500,000 uh, bribe from China to do their bidding, and he buys cheap garbage items with it. 
a basketball court, a 